And we are officially beginning at 7.05. And it's Eileen Rooney, Sherry Oaken, Maria Moody, and Emma, how do you pronounce your last name, Patia? Uh, Partica. Partica, okay. And we are meeting about the commemorations of the International Day of the Woman in March of 2022, which I assume we, we're going to be planning virtual again, or should we plan something live? Or I think that's the first order of business right. is what are we gonna be able to do? Yeah, um, I, think, I think for right now, we should anticipate that it will likely be virtual and we can hope for a stroke of good luck um, that it that it's I mean I feel like the next couple of weeks are gonna be I mean from everything that I'm hearing about the surge it, mm -hmm. it, it drops as quickly as it as it increases um, so I don't know by the beginning of March it, you know unless there's another variant um, I don't we may we may be in really good shape, but I don't know if we are going to do something virtual. I feel like the, doing something virtual is going to require planning things further in advance. Um, so well, that's, I think that's why I started. And then yeah. if things start to get better, then we can shift. That's why I wanted to talk back in November. But then again, this everything is so uncertain. Yeah. Um, I know I am right now in the midst of client having a, a big live meeting on January 25th and they're planning on having it. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> so yes. And the my experience, well, the one thing that this that will be easier is when we were planning, when we plan things that are month-long kind of commemorations like AAPI, you have to do so many different pieces. But International Day of the Woman is a day, right. you know, so we can have one event uh, instead of like AAPI last year, we had three or four things every single week for four weeks, yeah. plus the maps in the library and in the town hall. So, um, okay, so since we're assuming it's going to be virtual, now it's on to what kind of program and in the past, we have concentrated on featuring just local women, you know, women who have accomplishments or business people. I know last year we interviewed business people. I was one of the business people who lives and works in Wakefield. Um, this year, I was wondering if we want to instead put the word international before the word woman even, and try to find international representatives of women in our community to talk about their experience as American women who have other backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So we, we'd be hitting on diversity as well as the woman theme. I love that idea. And as, as an immigration lawyer, I'm never going to turn that down. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> and you know me, I think if we could salsa, I'm happy. So <laughs> the yeah. theme this year is also break the bias. So I mean, mm -hmm. that goes so well together. I love that. Yeah. So what we need to do then is identify how many, a half dozen women of different backgrounds who we could talk with. Um, and we would need to maybe interview each of them and ask them the same sort of sets of questions, a couple of questions that would sort of get to the heart of their experience as women and women of um, a different background, you know, of different ethnicity or, or, and, you know, I know that we have certainly met quite a few women over the last couple of years because we've been planning these other events. Um, so what do you think about Sherry, like doing a, almost like a panel discussion with a handful of them and we could certainly do that virtually by Zoom. Invite individuals to sort of listen in. And then to Maria's point, we could make that in person if we really wanted to kind of last minute maybe. Um, I guess we would have to book a, a location for that, but 
um, come up with sort of a, those lists of questions, Sherry, mm -hmm. that you mentioned and just sort of host the panel. That sounds fine with me. I mean, I just, I think any way we handle it, it'll be more interesting probably than just talking heads if we have people interacting at a panel. Right. Um, I mean, it'll be interesting just listening to individual women either way, as far as I'm concerned, but you know, if they, um, and that can, if we're allowed to meet live, I think easily transfer into a live event like we've had in the past. And usually we meet at the high school, right? Yep, and yep. The, uh, what used to be the lecture hall, the Savings Bank Theater. Right, where people can sit far enough apart that they don't feel uncomfortable because I've never been in there during any of our events when every seat was taken, mm -hmm. even when things were more open. In yeah. fact, the last International Day of the Woman was just before lockdown. Yeah. Yeah, because it was it was March. If we had it on actual International Women's Day, it would have been March eighth, um, and it was. It was the last in person event that we had, and then two weeks later, less than two weeks later, it was the following week. Right. Everything got. Oh, shut down. I know, because I was in Connecticut at a business meeting for the twelfth and thirteenth live. Twelfth and thirteenth, you know, like a strategic planning thing. So we were working really close together, and I got home and found that the town was starting to go into lockdown because I went to the library my first stop and the signs were up. And it's so crazy to think that was two years ago. Yeah. The crazy thing is how accustomed I think so many of us to have are to having such restricted lives. I think that's, when you get as old as I am, you say, you know, I'm healthy. I'm still healthy. I'm old, but I'm still healthy. And I want to do a lot of stuff in the years I have. And then we can't do it. But yeah. We can. Anyway, we can do something with this that will be interesting, that will be inspiring. Um, now, so we have two things to, to, to first of all figure out. And one is, who are we going to invite? And then secondly, what are we going to ask them? I wonder too, if we should have someone from the town council, if they're interested, maybe be the panel host or hostess. Um, we, have, we have someone international on the town council. Mm -hmm. We have Maureen, <laughs> who is yeah. not shy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think she would she would do that for us? She, I, I'm pretty sure, if I'm remembering correctly, I think she's done it in the past. Um, okay. This panel yes. has. And so, yeah, I, I think that she would be, um, She's certainly done it in the past. I'm happy to reach out to her um, and ask if she would be interested in doing this. Um, yeah, we, we've had her and we've had other members of the um, HRC do it. So if she is busy that night or if she can't do it for whatever reason, if anyone on this panel wants to do it, it, it absolutely. <laughs> so. Cool. Um, I'm also, you know, you know, I'm not shy, so I am very willing to do anything like that. But I'm thinking if we want to also maybe tap, uh, there are other women on the WHRC who have diverse backgrounds. Um, from um, I'm thinking of maybe Teresa, you know, who is not Argentina. I'm trying to think of, I think she's, her family is Colombian. Chile, right. Her family is, Ch that's right, because the Chilean dancers were friends of her right. family. Yeah. So that's always an option as well, um, mm -hmm. because it would be good to see that diversity of faces and backgrounds. And of course, she can also, whoever the hostess is, the facilitator could speak from their own experience. Um, I, I think what we might want to, I mean, because these, most of these, women that we're going to approach probably have either been here a long time or in like a case like Maureen, they were born here. Right. But their cultural background has certainly made a difference in how they've been able to move forward with their life in America. I know that I met um, several Asian women when we were doing AAPI month um, and they were not shy either. They would be, I think, also be willing to be on this panel. I hate to like do this profiling thing, but we want people to come from different parts of the world. So I'm right. thinking like we want South America, Central America, you know, Europe, 
Middle East, Asia, you know, I don't know if we have anyone in the community who has an African background. Because that would certainly be very, very different because then we would get into probably both the questions of race as well as ethnicity. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's what we, so who can you think, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of people that I know and I'm, unfortunately I'm not as tied in as some others might be in terms of asking people. And do they have to be from Wakefield? That's the other question. They have to be from Wakefield, but I think, um, I think we want to try and and find find people from Wakefield first, and mm -hmm. if we're if we're struggling, then we can go a little further afield. But I think there's definitely a lot of um, like one person I'm thinking of is uh, Saratine Rizzuto, um, who is um, Dominican okay. and um, just a wonderful person, and I think. I, She's also someone I'd be happy to, to reach out to to see if she'd be um, willing to serve on the panel. That would be great. Yep. That's great. Okay. Eileen and Emma, do you have some? And it, they could be students. Mm -hmm. Emma, I think in, in your high school, are there some students you can think of? I think we need to also think about the diversity of ages because they, people have different experiences at different points in their lives. So you might, is there an international student council by any chance? And um, I don't think we have a student council. Um, one of my friends is on the Black Student Union and she might be interested in speaking. Her name's actually also Emanuela, um, but her family is from, uh, it's skipping my mind right now, but um, I'm sure she might be interested in speaking as well. Okay, so her family might be from some African nation. Um, we we can't be sure because people can be black from the Mediterranean, from they can be from different places, but right. yeah. She was born. Yeah. Um, so, and you know, that's not saying we can't have someone who comes from Ireland. I mean, we're not only looking for faces of color, but we're looking for diversity. Oh, Pina. Pina's family is very Italian, isn't it? Pina Muscatelli? Mm. No, oh, she's she's Haitian, by the way. Pina is? Um, no. Uh, oh, no, sorry. Uh, I'm from Emanuela. Okay. okay. But um, like I said, we're not just looking for people of color. We're just looking for people who have a variety of backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So who do we start, how do we identify these people? <laughs> well, I, oh, go ahead, Eileen. I wish I had more, I mean, honestly, like the people here <laughs> are the people that I would reach out to say, hey, Maria, do you know so-and-so? Mm -hmm. um, I've only been here for, you know, four years or something like that. So I wish I could add more value when it comes to the individuals, but. Don't feel bad. I've lived here 20. And as many people as I know, I, I, I'm, I'm, there aren't as many. I wish I knew more as well. Um, my mom's also from Poland. I don't know if that she's not like a business owner, but she does work in um, Wakefield. So I'm sure she would be interested in speaking as well. Oh, that would be fantastic. And they don't yeah. have business owners. No, oh. they don't have to be business owners. It just yeah. says that people who have... Um, I think a, a real connection to their ethnic background, whether they were born here or born in a different country and can speak to how that might have colored their experiences, their American experiences. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, Cause she moved to Canada actually, and then here. So I'm sure she has a lot to say. On, oh, so like, she, was, she was born in Poland. Yep. Oh, what is her first name? Anna, um, she has a different last name. It's Tolinska. Can you spell that? T O L W I N S K A. Okay. I just and volunteered her. She has no idea, but she's now on a panel. Okay. <laughs> I'll and, talk to her. She'll and, be mm -hmm. Now, Sarah Teen Rizzuto, I can guess the Rizzuto part, but 
how is, I want to make sure I get her spelling correct as a, a possibility. Um, I believe it's S-A-R-I-T-I-N. Right. Oh, I'm close. And R-I-Z-Z-U-T-I or O? U-T-O. Yeah, okay. Rizzuto. S-A-R-I-T-I-N. I think I have met her. She I'm is pretty sure I have. involved in town. Yeah, I, I might have even canvassed with her for one of the people in town council at one time. It's possible, yeah. Yeah. She, she friends with um, Marie? She's friends with everybody, I think. Okay. <laughs> She's like the unofficial mayor. I think she just okay. is in so many different circles in town. <laughs> okay, so like I said, you know, we want to get people from different parts of the world. And I will, do you want me to reach out to those moms that I, I know from the AAPI community? Or a great idea. You know who's another possibility? Um, the, I have her name somewhere. She owns one of the Thai restaurants. And she she's a businesswoman. I think she lives in Lakeville. Oh, I have, I have, because of what we were doing last year, I have her background information and that's Southeast Asian. So that would be, you know, a different part of Asia because, you know, we learned last year that Asia is 48 countries from the Mediterranean all the way to the Pacific. That's a lot of nations. Um, you know, and Asia includes being Israeli. It includes anything Middle Eastern, includes Pakistan, Afghanistan, um, China. So, it would be good if we had someone from the far different parts of Asia, maybe. Um, I'm trying, I, I know I kept the business card because I kept all the contacts. Um, but that might be interesting too, because that Southeast Asian is quite different. And I know that certainly her culture, because she owns a restaurant as well, that oh, these plugs don't fit very really well. Um, that the, her culture is important to her as somebody who familiarizes everybody with the wonderful food. Um, so how many, how many people do we think would be optimum? Marie, did you work on last year's Women's International or any of the past ones? Um, two years ago. Um, okay. Yeah, I worked Not last on year, yeah. two years ago and three years ago. Um, and we had panel discussions, but I mean, generally what we, what we had done is very similar to what we're suggesting. It was, a, it was a panel discussion. It was, I think five, I wanna say, and I can look back there, they were all recorded. Um, I wanna say there were five panelists because um, we didn't want it to be so overwhelming that people didn't get, we, we kept it to about an hour. Um, we wanted to make sure that everyone had enough time to speak mm -hmm. and that we could really kind of hear their stories. Um, so we didn't wanna have too many people. Um, and then we always had far more questions than we ended up asking, um, because it's just great. Like people start talking and you just get really, um, you know, they get excited about sharing their stories and people are interested in hearing from them. Um, so we always end up not like <laughs> shelving three or four of the questions that we were planning to ask, but, um, but yeah, and the other thing is that it's traditionally been an event that um, that people bring their kids to. It's um, so we yes. have kept away from politics. We've kept away from really hot button issues because um, we we want to hear people's stories. I think that's where it comes from. The like it, it, women's experiences, um, you know, where they're coming from, whether it's their cultural background, whether it's their their upbringing, like kind of what what brought them to where they are today, um, and people have really enjoyed bringing their kids. Um, we've had Girl Scout troops that like the whole group comes. Um, so I, I would, if people are in agreement, I think it would be great to stick with that um, because it really is about stories. And I think the stories in terms of breaking the bias, uh, I think we can weave that in. Um, yeah. Um, I love that. There, there's a, oh, she's so soft-spoken though. There's a lovely woman in my book group, Maya, who is from India, and she's so soft-spoken though. Sometimes we can barely hear her. Um, who, when her family first moved to this area, they burned a cross on her lawn. Oh, that's awful. That, 
I mean, it's a horrifying thing. When she told that story, because lots of things come out as we're discussing books and books by the lake and book group. And we would just, I mean, we said, but we live here. I mean, we live in the North. This is not the deep South, but, um, and I don't know if Maya would be willing to be on the panel because her background, she still more often than not wears a sari. Um, she, but at the same time, she's come to my house for bluegrass music, you know, for a party. Um, she, she's now a widow. Her husband died last year, a year and a half ago, not from COVID. Um, but she, as someone who actually wears her culture, you know, on her body also still, she might be an interesting person. Um, She'd be willing to talk. I mean, I think that would be amazing. Yeah, I, I can talk to, to Maya about that because like I said, her, and I think her husband was a doctor. I mean, this is a, a highly educated family, but at the same time, I, I, issues of caste might come into it, you know, in, in her family, her background coming here, where we're supposedly, we're not a casteless society, but we're mm. not really a casteless society. Um, and because people looked at them as, uh, for their color and immediately designated them as a different caste, as a lower caste. So um, she might be a very interesting person to be on this panel. I think we might have more ideas of people we can invite than we probably have room for them. Um, I still would love to have somebody from Africa as well. Because that is that is that kind of background has got to be very quite di quite different. Because again, it's an intersection between you know both your race and your culture as well as nationality. Um, I know I've been doing a lot of even fictional reading, and some of the books that I've read, like America, <laughs> um, a Nigerian woman coming to the United States and dealing with race for the first time when in Nigeria she was rich and privileged. You know, that kind of thing is a, a, would be an interesting thing to hear about people's experiences. Yeah. Um, so, what do we do now? Do we want to start formulating questions tonight or do we want to sleep on it and talk again in a week or so? Does it make sense for us to see who we get first? <laughs> maybe there's a little bit of like an intersection between the question, you know what I mean? The mm -hmm. people that we have and the questions that we ask. I think we'll, we'll, we'll have some general ones that are lead questions, that, but then the specific questions will be, there needs to be some specific ones for different people. You know, and so, so we don't, I mean, I, by, by saying questions, I'm saying let's start, we can put together a whole lot of them and then choose the ones that are most appropriate and then tailor certain ones to certain people. Um, the, I mean, I can't help but think that they're also, when we're talking about it, someone from Europe, um, a survivor who came to the United States. I mean, that's another European background. I mean, my, I have almost no family on my father's side, almost nothing, no one, because they never got, they never made it here. But other people fortunately did. And, and I know that we just had two people speak to our last meeting, WHSC meeting, that were survivors. Um, and I don't know if you want to add that to the mix or not. My, my only concern, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead, go ahead, Maria. Um, my only concern is those are such powerful stories that I almost feel like they deserve their own, kind of their own sphere. Okay. Um, it, it, and it not, yeah, I, 
I wouldn't want to, I mean, I, uh, as much as I loved hearing from them, I felt bad that they only got 10 minutes at the beginning of the meeting. Yes. It was like, oh, I, I could listen to them talk for another two hours and it still wouldn't have captured everything. Um, and mm -hmm. so, yeah, that would be my only hesitation. Yeah, and those were the children of right. survivors. Imagine if we had, I mean, by now those the people who are actual survivors are, are so elderly, there aren't as many around. Mm -hmm. um, but okay, how about even um, someone who came from Ireland from the Troubles, during the Troubles and emigrated here? I mean, that's, I mean, that's political as well, but you know, you're coming for, you're coming from a place that's very divided and you come here and do you feel like you've gotten away from that kind of thing? And I know you said you don't want to talk about politics so much, but that is the question of acceptance and um, fitting in and um, at expectations. And I think that's a that might be a big thing you might want to ask everybody, like what were your expectations when you first came here? And what was the reality? Yeah. I mean, are we gonna ask everybody briefly to first tell their, a little bit of their story? Each person? We briefly just, are we gonna ask them briefly to just talk about their, their family background or their particular background and cultural background? I think that makes sense. So see, now we, we already have two general opening questions. Like first, we're gonna meet people, we're gonna have their stories. And then I think maybe the first question might be now, when you, what were your expectations about American life? Um, and I guess that means that we're assuming we're all gonna have people on the panel who are first generation Americans. Because that narrows it down a lot. What do you think? Are all of the people that we have listed here first generation? Is Sarah Teen first generation? I'm, I'm not 100% sure. So I think um, depending on who we, uh, who agrees to be on the panel, mm -hmm. um, that may be a question that we, we tailor a little bit. It may be one of those questions that you know, that we direct for the people who were born outside the United States mm -hmm. um, who came here, um, it, you know, it, we can kind of tweak that question as we need to. Okay. Okay. Um, and so where do we things may come right out of their origin story too, right? Like, as they sort of come here and then start to realize that they did have this expectation of America to, you know, to be paved with gold or something like that, right? And, and that didn't happen. I wonder if we also ask about like challenges over time, right? Did things get easier or harder for them the longer they were here? Um, or if they've always been here, challenges because of their affinity for their particular background and or conflict maybe between was their backgrounds and the American way. Because, right. you know, different cultures have different restrictions mm -hmm. and different opportunities. I'm trying to write down some of these ideas and somehow or another I'll put them in some kind of notes for us. Um, okay, so we have, you know, a, we have several different possible people to speak with who, and so far um, we have someone possibly who's Indian, someone, so that's Middle Asian, we have somebody Southeast, you know, South Central Asian, we have someone possibly who's Thai, who's Southeast Asian, we have someone from Europe, um, your mom, 
we have possibly someone from the Caribbean. And do we want to ask Teresa from Chile? Or she might be able to suggest someone else? Yeah, I can't hurt. I think we should ask her. I don't know if she's if she'll be interested, but um, yeah. It would be certainly easy if she says yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that's no. We've got, we've already got six different possibilities. Great. So, okay. Are we going to try to do this on the actual day? What day of the week is it? I just need to check. It's a Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. And it's, I know I sent everybody that information and I, and I didn't write it down because I didn't have my 20, 22 calendar at the time. And let's see if my calendar actually, they have St. Patrick's Day in here in March, but they don't have International Day of the Woman. <laughs> um, for some reason, I want to say it was like the eighth of, the eighth of the month? Yeah, it's the eighth. It is? Yep. Yep. Should we try to aim for that day? Yeah, I mean, I think um, let's check some, um, let's check the town calendar and make sure that something isn't already planned. I mean, if we have to have it, I think we should try and stick with that week, definitely. Um, but see if there's anything major um, going on that night. Okay. Okay, since you're very tied in, Maria, especially you know, with the town council living in your house, could you check the calendar? <laughs> uh, I'll check the calendar. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and Emma, maybe you can check and see if there's possible students from other backgrounds because we'd like to. We're looking for young people as well. Eileen, what we, I'm going to do the minutes and talk to a couple of people. Eileen, which part of this do you want to do between now and our next meeting? <laughs> Do you want me to try and reserve the high school for the eighth anyway, just to have it? That and contact WCAT. Because okay. we have to have some WCATs help no matter what we do, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So if you can contact the high school and WCAT. So we each have something to do before we meet again. Um, yep. And like you said, you know, I was. I was, the reason I was so panicky in November is because I remember last year, the AAPI, because we did so much every week, I had wished we'd started six months in advance, but this one with only one day, one event, um, it's not uncomfortable starting in January, two months in advance. Um, and, and as with all the other things that I sometimes get involved with, I'll be very happy when the time comes to make sure that everything goes out in the press you know, to all the different places once we have it all resolved. And, um, and because we don't know if it can be live or not, I guess we really can't start advertising this until we get into February. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Um, another thing that I wanted to see if people were interested in, I mean, if we want to do something different, we can. But in the past, we've had um, She Major, the female acapella group, on the high school perform. Um, so if we, I'd be happy to reach out to them um, if we want to try and do that. If we want to see about a, a different musical group, um, we can look into that, but just wanted to see what people's thoughts were. I think that'd be great. And they're always very popular. Everybody always enjoys them. Yeah. And it gives them a, an opportunity to perform when there's not that many performance opportunities right now. Right. Right. Who is the person that leads that at the high school, Maria? I believe it's um, Anna Morell. Okay. Yeah. I will, I'm writing that down because I think that's something that should probably go into our resources as well, our resource sheet that, you know, um, and that's, that's very important here also. I'm gonna put on my other half, the communication subcommittee kind of hat. <laughs> Any contact people that we, identify that help us with this kind of thing, let's make sure we keep adding them to that list so that whoever does the next event 
has the availability of that information as well. Like I didn't know Anna Morell. And uh, I think that each year we should, you know, because we're not all gonna be on this council and um, on the commission. I know I have to reapply. Um, and Maria, I think this is your last, yeah. this is your last year, right? Eileen, you still have another year, correct? You I think I have year. another two. Another two. Oh, that's right, because you've only been on one year, right? I had an unexpired term, so I have two years already, and I have one another one coming up, so I'm going to apply again, because there's still so much I'd really like to help with and do. Let's, so I want to continue. Um, okay. Sure, when, to yes. ask that for WCAT and the high school, are both of those contact information listed out on the, okay, great. Mm -hmm. The high school, I think you have to contact the principal to resume okay. the high school and his name is on there. Um, and WCAT, yes, is definitely on there. Great, okay, I'll do um, that. Okay, when shall we meet again? Um, see, it's January, right? 2022. Should we now? We have a W um, HRC meeting coming up on the 18th. On the 18th, do we want to get some input from the? Should we ask for time on the agenda? I mean, the, I mean, Benny always puts a people on for reporting out. Um, I, I guess I'll just, I'll, I can indicate to Benny that I want to make sure that we're on there mm -hmm. to talk about and see if maybe others have some contacts or suggestions of people who would be appropriate for this kind of event. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Um, okay, so what I have is that um, we're planning for virtual, hoping for live. We're going to it, we're going to like honor the theme, which is break the bias by having some concentration on women of diverse international backgrounds. Um, we've been discussing who we might invite. Um, we thought that maybe Maureen might be someone who might serve as the, the host, the hostess. Um, some of our suggestions were Sarah Tin Rizzuto, who is of the Dominican background, um, Anna. To Winska, who is of Polish background, um, Teresa, who is Chilean, Maya, who is Indian, um, the restaurant owner whose name eludes me, who is Thai. You know, these are some of the different people, and we were going to start the panel discussion because we're trying to get at the core of like how their cultural background and upbringing affects their American experiences. So we'll start with asking each to please tell us a little bit about their family story. Um, and those who emigrated will ask, what kind of expectations did you have when you came here? And if they are, and then how their background might have challenged or conflicted with their actual experiences as Americans. And we are going to invite She Major to end on an up beat note with some beautiful music. Look at that, a whole program in 44 minutes. 44 minutes. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Record time. To tell you the truth, I've been, since I raised my hand, I've been thinking about this a lot. Um, yeah. And um, I'm very, I'm excited. I think this is gonna be a wonderful, just a, a different perspective on what we've done in the past, you know, and how do you, it's hard to keep on reinventing it, you know, each year. Um, let's just hope that maybe in 2023, we can absolutely have some kind of live event. Yeah. Um, but this fits right in with the international theme, break the bias. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's great that we're gonna be doing that. Yep. And um, okay, yep. so when should we meet again? Right? Should we meet again right after the WHRC meeting when we get some input from that? Night or or later that week? 
Can we either. do later that week? Yeah, yeah. We I was thinking that week. Our meeting. Oh I no, those meetings. Too. Those I meetings. Can't do two. I am yeah. way too old for that. I'm oh, barely I mean, making it to nine, guys. Yeah. 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 Well, it's not. You, 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 when you put together an agenda, you have to be sure that the agenda that you're putting together is doable within a reasonable yeah. amount of time, and the yeah. agendas are just too long. So it's always um, good. I just, I don't know that I could do a nine to 10 meeting. Yeah. I, oh, heavens no. Yeah. I'll be like this and then call at some point. <laughs> no. Um, it's only one of the only TV shows I ever watch is on 10 o'clock on Tuesday night. So. Oh, see, there you go. <laughs> and I have to be alert. Okay. Yeah. So how about Thursday, the 20th? Um, that is actually the middle school seventh grade winter concert. So I'll have is to miss really? that. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. No good. Um, I have no trouble with Friday nights. Um, I'm not exactly dating. I've been married for 33 years. So whatever. <laughs> whatever. So um, if you wanted to do it on Friday night, I would have no trouble doing it if you want to do it on a Friday, depending. I mean, Emma, you're the only one who's single in this group. Everybody else is married. Right. Is Friday night okay with you? Because we're married doesn't mean we don't have Friday night plans. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Friday night plans. Life is we, over. And no one has any parents anymore, <laughs> anymore on Friday nights. <laughs> I mean, because of COVID, I'm pretty much free. Oh. <laughs> okay. So why don't we plan like just another hour meeting, like seven o'clock on Friday night, and then we can all do whatever we want to do after that. Okay. Sounds yes. good. Okay. So 7 p.m. on the 21st. Um, Maria, would you put, you, you, you put this in the last time. Would you tell Sherry? Yep. Okay. Um, 7 p.m. 21st, yeah, Maria will arrange. Okay, so we all have our little our little jobs. Great. Okay. Maria, do you Maria, do you want me to contact Anna Morell? I don't have her contact information, but I'm happy to email her if you want. No, it's okay. I don't okay. mind. Yeah, okay. that's fine. Um, so yeah, once I check the calendar, I'll email you and let you know um, if there's anything major going on um, the night of the 8th. And th so then you can see about um, booking the room. The only other, um, I think, request um, would be for anyone that we're reaching out to about possibly being on the panel that we talk to them before the, the next general meeting um, so that if we are asking people for other ideas, we're not getting an overwhelming <laughs> number of, like if we already, if everyone that we just listed, that we just brainstormed at the meeting tonight, I think that's a pretty full panel. Um, so I don't know that we would need to ask for more names from the, from the general HRC members. Um, yeah. so if we could know if people are, are a yes or a no for being on the panel before the meeting on the 18th, and then we can figure out if we need more names. Okay. I'll talk to Teresa and Maya. Mm -hmm. Um, Emma, shock your mother. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, I'll and Maureen and Saratine. Okay. Um, and oh God, I wish I can remember the name of that woman from Thailand. I, I, got the, I have it upstairs. I, so that, that makes one, two, we have too many, I think. One, two, three, four. No, we have five. Right, we have five. But I still, like you said, I'm still really interested in maybe having someone from Africa. If, if there is someone, a student, perhaps. Would, do you have any contacts in the Black Student Union, Emma? Um, I could talk to some people. Um, I'm not sure when their next meeting is, but I could probably find out. Okay, if you could find out before we confirm and, and all of these names, because I think that that would be one of, uh, would be very interesting to hear from a young person. Well, we also, we also had the suggestion of the student Emanuela from Haiti. Mm -hmm. mm. Definitely talk to her as well. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. I will send out these notes to you and I hope that, um, and if you, if I didn't get anything, if I didn't get it all correct, tell me before I I'll correct them before I give them to Sherry Dalton for the permanent record. Mm -hmm. This is quite a lot of little details and you would not believe the scribble sheet. This was not a good way of taking notes. I should have had a bigger piece of paper. That's um, okay. <laughs> okay. 
Great. This is this is exciting. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will see you on the 18th for the WHRC meeting. And um, we've, we've all got our tasks to take care of in the next week. Sounds good. Great. And great. Okay. Great. Good night, everybody. <laughs>